So now we're going to review some cases on secondary hypertension. I need somebody to read this case for us, please. Yes. Okay, please read for us. You are evaluating an eight-year-old girl. You notice that she has diminished femoral pulse when compared with the brachial pulse. There is an association. There is associated systolic murmur, which with late peak at apex, left axilla, and left back. What is the next best physical exam to do to help you make your diagnosis? Beautiful. Please, everybody oh. send me your answer. Again, <laughs> the tricks of Dr. Brony are coming to play because I need you to be able to draw the equation when you see this and that. As I always say, when you're preparing for an exam, it's always like you're in a mathematics game. If I see this, I see that. What am I thinking about? So, eight-year-old girl, number one, diminished femoral pulses, number two, as compared to brachial pulses, systolic murmur with late peak at the apex was the next best physical exam to do to help you to make your diagnosis. A, are you going to auscultate the chest? B, check the ankle brachial index because of brachial femoral delay. C, check for BP in both arms. D, palpate the abdomen for a pulsatile mass. And D, do a fundoscopy right away. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. People are saying check BP in both arms. Check BP in... It looks like that is popular. And uh, someone is also saying palpate the abdomen for pulsatile mass. When you hear the issue of a pulsatile mass, what are you thinking about? You're thinking about maybe aortic aneurysm. Wilms tumor. You no, know, yeah, you're thinking about Wilms tumor and all those things, right? But then this question is saying this child has diminished femoral pulse as compared to the brachial pulse, and there's a systolic memo. So that means there's something Quartation. there's something happening in the heart. Exactly. Yeah, when it comes to coagulation, what are you going to do? You are going to check the blood pressure in both arms. And compare them. So that's why I dropped this question. Secondary hypertension. You should be able to deal with secondary hypertension so far as the various um, things are concerned. So that is coactation for you. You want to check the blood pressure in both arms. Okay, good. I need someone else to read this CBM case for us. I need you, are evaluating, mm -hmm. you are evaluating an eight year old girl. You notice that she has diminished femoral pulse when compared with the brachial pulse. There is associated systolic murmur with late peak at apex, left axilla, and left back. You decide to perform a bedside investigation. What investigation will you perform? List one. Now, before you continue, if I was supposed to summarize this whole case, what will I say? You are evaluating an eight-year-old girl with coactation of the aorta. What is the next best bedside investigation you will do? <laughs> so all this English, you notice that she has diminished femoral pulses when compared to the brachial pulses, the sagittal systolic, that's all describing the aortic uh, uh, coactation of the aorta. So if you want to summarize, you are evaluating an eight-year-old girl with coactation of the aorta. What bedside test will you do? Measurement. Blood pressure measurement is not an investigation, it's a physical exam. Wow. Echo? Echocardiogram? Echo? Come on, before you even get bedside. to bedside. Bedside. So, something ECG. with bedside. ECG. Exactly. ECG. Doctors, don't think too big. Remember, this is an exam at the level of a Canadian medical student. Right? Keep things simple. The, the things are in your reach. Just fetch into your pocket and then psh, BP measurements. I've seen guys uh, right. No, echo is bedside, but you don't, echo is not something you do first. If somebody comes to your ER in rural Alberta, Dr. Fariba, echo is not what you are going to do first. Of course, you do an echo, you do an echocardiogram, but you are not even the one who does an echo. It's a cardiologist or, you know, someone who has been trained. 
But what is one thing every every doctor on this platform can do? It's an ECG. Before you even get to ECO, you have to do ECG. Don't also forget that Canada's healthcare system is publicly funded. And we want to see that the doctors who are coming through Medcognito are using the, 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 the public money judiciously. You've not even done an ECG and you're going to do an ECHO. Come on. Right? So please. <laughs> I'm sure we are learning a lot. All of us are learning a lot. Okay, good. Another one, please. Somebody should read the case for us, please. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, you are evaluating an eight-year-old girl. You notice that she has diminished femoral pulses when compared to the brachial pulses. There's an associated systolic murmur with late peak at the apex, left axilla, and left back. On second look, you're concerned about the physical exam features of the child and feel that the child should be evaluated by a pediatrician because of the possibility of a syndrome. What features are you looking for? Are you likely to see? And no, look, why? this is very simple. We are already building on coactation of the aorta. So this question, if I have to summarize it, is saying you have an eight-year-old girl who has coactation of the aorta. But you suspect that this child has a syndrome. In other words, which syndrome is associated with coactation of the aorta? And, and what are the features of that syndrome? Turner syndrome. Ah, 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 ah. Who said that? Who said that? <laughs> who said Turner syndrome? Please, who said Turner syndrome? I did. Dr. Froza, you are yeah. becoming very sharp, I can tell. You are really going through all the mocks. You are sending me your answers. I really, really like, you know, the way you communicate to me, with me on, on, on um, um, through WhatsApp about your progress is beautiful. So now this is very simple. Now that you've noticed that coactation of the iota is associated with Turner syndrome, what are the features of Turner syndrome? That's all that the question is I'm asking about. This CDM is, I could have written this CDM again. What are the features of Turner syndrome? Less five or less three. But because we, we build associations in learning. So first, I want you to remember that when you have a child with hypertension who is diagnosed with coarctation, one of the syndromes which are still with coarctation of the other is Turner syndrome. So what are the features of Turner syndrome? Then boom, we get in there. If a child has Turner syndrome, they have short stature. So please always remember this picture. Always keep it in your mind. When you are sitting at the dining table, when you are joining the bus, when you are driving your Lamborghini, whatever it is that you are doing, please remember Turner syndrome. Okay? Coactation of the aorta, Turner syndrome. Short stature, short webbed neck. They have a low posterior hairline. Broad chests. Can see obviously the chest is broad, right? Widely spaced nipples. Lymph edema of the hands and the feet. And they may have cystic hygroma. If I were you, because if I, I, I'm an, if I was supposed to twist this question, I can say that patient has coactation of the aorta, also notice to have short stature, broad chest, low posterior hairline. What's your diagnosis? I can also turn it out. So this can be turned in so many ways. Or I can give you the easy features in my question stem, and I'll ask you, what other features will you look for? <laughs> Coactation of the aorta, China syndrome, features you should know. Doctors, please, are we all on the same page? Can Dr. Bruni, does Dr. Bruni have your permission to move on to the next stage? Can I? Coactation of the aorta. Okay, good. All right. Good. So teaching points about coactation of the aorta. It is the narrowing of the aorta, mostly at the level of the ductus arteriosus. It is associated with bicuspid aortic valve. And that's why probably you were hearing that memo and associated with Turner syndrome in 35% of cases. Most of the time, the history is asymptomatic. And physical exam, there's blood pressure discrepancy between the upper and the lower extremities. And that is why you could feel the pulse in the upper extremities more than in the lower extremities. There's radio brachiofemoral delay 
and the blood the systolic blood pressure um the memma it, it, like it's it it's it has a late peak at the apex left axilla and left back the investigations you do so remember dr fariba you do ecg then you do echo okay or mri to confirm your diagnosis but the first thing you do is an ecg how are you going to manage the patient you have to give prostaglandins to keep the ductus arteriosus patent mm -hmm. for stabilization then surgical correction if it's an older infant you can do balloon arterioplasty or surgical correction hello doctors We've arrived safely and gloriously with the review of coactation of the aorta. We've dealt with MCQs and CDM so far as coactation of the aorta is concerned. We've learned that coactation of the aorta is also associated with bicuspid aortic valve and tenor syndrome. Please, can we land the plane on coactation of the aorta gloriously and then move on to something else? I need your permission to do that. Can we do that? Can we move? Beautiful. Okay, good. Now let's talk about renal artery thrombosis. Let me make sure my, my laptop is charged. Renal artery thrombosis, renal artery thrombosis. You know, so um, basically renal artery thrombosis, what you want to note about it is that the child will come with severe pain in the flank, severe pain. And if you're not careful, you may think, is this a kidney stone? Is it palynephritis? So be careful. That's why I've put the danger sign here, right? It can lead to renal vascular hypertension, chronic kidney disease, and stage kidney disease. And two main causes of renal artery thrombosis can be an embolus, okay, if the child has any cardioemboli disease, and in situ thrombosis, like if the child has, you know, any uh, hypercoagulable state like Phospholipid, uh, antiphospholipid syndrome, or you know anything which causes um, um, hypercoagulable states, and that can lead to renal injury. Renal artery thrombosis can be a bit funny, so I'm not going to spend all your time on it. Now let's talk about renal artery stenosis. Renal artery stenosis. You know I always tell you that common things are common. Common things are common. Now look at why I've highlighted this. Renal artery stenosis is the most common cause of secondary hypertension. Hmm. Renal artery stenosis is the most common cause of secondary hypertension. If I were you, if I were Dr. Fariba, if I were Dr. Omar, if I were, you know, um, if I were Dr. Abdul Wali or Dr. Naz or Dr. Atlas, you know what I'll do? I'm going to make a note of renal artery stenosis in my notebook because it's the most common cause of secondary hypertension and common things are common, right? So how will I pick it up? Most of the time, this child has a negative family history of hypertension. Number two, this is a child that when you give an ACE inhibitor, or an ARB, because the child has hypertension, so you want to give a medication to bring down the blood pressure. And you check the creatinine, realize the creatinine is going up, 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 up. And then there's also a child that does not have heart failure. But you realize that that child has been to the emergency room several times with flash pulmonary edema, shortness of breath. <laughs> I can't breathe. And then the child is giving some frisimide and then it goes away. Ah, you do BNP, brain atrial peptide. There's no increased BNP. Why is this child coming to the emergency room with recurrent pulmonary edema, flash pulmonary edema, renal artery stenosis? You give a medication like lysinopro, um, losartan, that's an ARB. And then creatinine is just rising. Renal artery stenosis. Their kidneys are asymmetric. They may have epigastric or flank brui. They may have spontaneous hypokalemia. So while their creatinine is rising, their potassium is dropping. Renal artery stenosis. Doctors, please. <laughs> Renal artery stenosis. You should not miss it. Why? Because common things are common. 
renal artery stenosis, flash pulmonary edema, creatinine is rising with lisinopril, ARB. No, usually there's no family history and it's the most common cause of secondary hypertension. While creatinine is rising, potassium is dropping. Renal artery stenosis.